All right, just want to give you guys a quick overview of what's going to happen with this build before I get started. First of all, obviously it's all torn apart, and the purpose and reason behind that is I'm going to redo all the wiring. I'm not going to use the power distribution board that comes with the Terrett 650. I'm actually going to use the Pixhawk 4 power distribution board. And I'd like to get rid of this and use just a lighter top um, plate, but I can't seem to find one online. Um, so I'm just going to stick with this, even though I'm going to be, it's just going to be dead weight, really. I'm going to extend the arms of this. I'm going to do that so I can fit 17 inch props. Then I'm gonna wire it all up with the Pixhawk 4 and top it all off with an awesome 10,000 milliamp tattoo battery. So I'm really excited to get this all going. So let's get going. All right, I don't wanna bore everybody with just showing you a long video of how I disassembled this. So I'm gonna do all that off camera and that's pretty self-explanatory. Gotta get rid of all this old solder, rip all this apart, it'll probably take me an hour and and then what I want to show is exactly the components I used, how I set it up, how I decided where I'm going to put things. And that's the kind of stuff I think is interesting for people to know, especially if you're going to be building one of these quadcopters in your own place. So I'm going to do that and then I'll get back to you. So I love to show tips and tricks on how I do things. And so if there is anything that I find useful for you guys, I'm definitely going to show you. So during this teardown process, I got everything torn down. But look at all this extra solder that I have on these joints here, uh, on these um, con connection pads. And I want to show you how you can get rid of all this solder really easily. And that's with this, no clean. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this is, or it's like a little wick of some kind, but basically it absorbs the solder. And I'll leave a link in the description where you can where you can pick this up, just like on Amazon or something. It's where I get a lot of my stuff. And those are affiliate links, so if you use them, uh, you know, it helps me out, gives me like 1% without um, charging you guys any extra, obviously. So uh, if you find this useful, uh, hit that link and you can buy some. And let me show you how it works. What you do is you can just put this wick over the top of one of these joints and I'll show you the before and after right so look how much solder's on there this is one that I've already done it looked it looked like that but let's do this one over here so we'll put it down I'll just let some of this wick out get your soldering iron just press down on it and it just starts to absorb everything right yep. So check it out. I mean, look at the difference. That removed essentially like all of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of these. All right, turned out pretty clean, don't you think? This is where I had that big chunk and there's nothing there. And then in the end, all the solder has been soaked up into this little wick. And so you just cut that off and throw it away. Just like that. I like to give you guys tips when I can. Hopefully that one helps somebody out. Let's keep going. All right, so I kind of want to give you an idea of what I've done. I've added this top plate here. And what will happen is I'm going to mount my GPS back here like you see. And this isn't quite done. I'll have my Pixhawk right here. I have foam dampening pads that it came with. So it will be mounted there. And then, under here is where I have my power module. So I will get everything soldered up, add it on, and mount it there. And then that way it also gives me the option to put my radio receiver on either side and just extra hardware I can mount underneath or on top. And it's gonna be nice to have all this extra space just to mount things. All right, so I've extended the arms on my Terret 650, and if you're interested on how to do this, I'll leave a link in the description to a separate video that I put out on how to do this. Um, but because of that, I now had to lengthen all of the wires for my ESC and my motors and all that. So I've got everything cut up, server wire, wires ready, power wire is ready and I need to solder it all up, get it ready to go so I can run it through the arm and start attaching it onto the frame. All right, well that took a little bit of time but I finally got everything soldered up. You can see I didn't want to actually directly solder onto 
the ESC because it's all nice and shrink wrapped. So I just spliced and soldered on the length that I needed, which is going to be quite a bit longer, as you can tell, than the actual arm. But that's because I'm gonna need to run it up through the frame and onto the power distribution board. From here, we got all the wires ran through the new arms, and we've got this braided sleeve nylon sleeve on here as well. So once this is all done, tidied up, and soldered onto the power distribution board, I think it's gonna really look slick. So here we go, let's see what we can do. All right, so I'm halfway through my soldering here on my Pixhawk 4 power module, and I've got my motor two and four here on the rear hooked up. My solder joints don't look that great, but I mean, come on, what can you expect with a terrible soldering iron? Um, I suggest getting you guys is get yourself a good soldering iron. If you don't have one already, I will be buying a new one so I can make these look a lot nicer, but they will do the trick. So I'll move on to the next two up front here. Okay, on this power management board, a few things you need to do. Uh, one, obviously you connect your ESC. Let's see if I can get something in here to show you. Uh, you want to connect your your red, your positive line to the B plus, and then ground your black lines to obviously the ground. Now I connected my ESC ground to this ground because ground is ground everywhere across all of your power distribution board and on all your drones. Right, ground is ground. Um, but then the signal wire goes here. In this M4, the M2, and obviously if you have M8 and M6, that's where your your signal wires would go for those motors. But mine's a quad, not an octocopter, so that's where they're going to go. So in the end, this is what you have. I have over here. You can see signal wires, signal wire, you know, positive, negative for the speed controller, and then this is the little ground coming in for the speed controller as well. All mounted up. I think it looks pretty slick. I don't know, what do you guys think? The cables coming out from under the middle there, it's just so nice to have them all very neatly managed. I don't have wires flying everywhere, so it's really nice, that setup. So from here, honestly, I'm not sure what I need to do. <laughs> so I've got a lot of wires and that's where I'm at really. <laughs> got all the wires left and got to mount this bad boy. Well, these two things, GPS and the actual Pixhawk 4 itself. So now it's going to be a matter of reading documentation, looking things up online, and getting all the wires set up. All right, everything here on the power module is labeled pretty well as well as the Pixhawk itself. And so what I've been finding is, based on documentation, these IO PWM in ports, that's what's going to map to your M1, 2, 3, 4, and 4. And they also map to 5, 6, 7, and 8. Then obviously the FMU PWN, that's these auxiliary ports right here. Now I'm gonna be using both these ports as well as obviously the speed controller and the IO PWM in ports because I will be doing some servos and you know I'll have landing gear and things like that, which I will be running through here. So I'm gonna to need to connect my wires for both the IO PWM and the FMU PWN. And I'm gonna have to map it and connect it up here on the Pixhawk, which they are down here on the bottom. And then the last one that needs to be connected here is the power. So that's says right here PWR1. We only need to connect in one of the power cables. All right, so I've ran a lot of these wires 
out from underneath the power module and I'm going to go ahead and mount the Pixhawk now. I've got these vibration dampeners all set up. Just like that. All right, it is officially mounted. Okay, so I'm gonna plug this in for the first time and I'm really hoping I don't see white smoke. <laughs> and let's, let's see what happens. ESCs are chirping, that's a good sign. Pixhawk is indicating that something's going on. <laughs> so far, no, no white smoke. Okay, I think I'm ready for a test flight. I'm going to go and do just a quick simple little test flight, make sure everything's set up correctly. I don't have my battery fully charged, um, but this is a 10,000 milliamp Tattoo Battery 6S. It is large. <laughs> it is one of their new batteries with the, uh, the built-in power management. Uh, so you can see like how fully charged it is by a click of a button, uh, which is really nice. And I'm just gonna do a quick walkthrough of what I did um, on Mission Planner to get this all configured. And whenever you get a PixHawk, this is including the PixHawk 4, you need to plug this into Mission Planner and go through the setup calibration. So there are the initial setup and the mandatory setups that you need to go through, such as the compass calibration. You're not gonna be able to fly this until you do things like that. Compass calibration, you're gonna to wanna to calibrate your radio. I'm using a jumper T16, which I love by the way. I went through the radio calibration, compass calibration, what else did I do? There's a few other calibrations you need to do and if you want information on that, I mean, I could put a video out on how I did all of it, but it's just the same thing as older PixHawk, so you can look up videos on that. Um, but again, if, if there's a need, then I, I could definitely do that if people are interested. So that's what I have, and I'm gonna walk through some of the other components. So I'm using a FR Sky X8R with the telemetry um, smart port. So I haven't quite got this working yet. I had it working on my old PixHawk, so I'm still working on this, but hopefully getting that work. I'm using obviously the GPS it came with. I'm using T-Motor 17 inch MS1704R props. And these are the Terra, well, it can't turn that way because everything's in the way. Let's see. These are the Terra 4108-380KV motors. Um, pretty standard, you can find those. And again, I also have the Tattoo battery. And then the Pixhawk 4, which is what this video is mostly about, using the power distribution board down there. One thing that kind of upsets me about the PixHawk 4 so far is just the amount of ugly cables you have laying around. I mean, you have the power management board underneath and then you're running all these wires up to go to the PixHawk and off top of the, the board as well. And that part of the PixHawk I, I don't like. It's just, I mean, I don't know a better way. I can't even think of a better way that they could do it, but it just feels messy. So I'm gonna find a way and figure out a way to manage my cords better up top, uh, but that's gonna be for the future. Anyway, let's uh, cut to a flight video and see, see how this flies. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of voiceover here on how the test flight went. And just a quick tip, when you go to arm your PixHawk, you are going to need to press the button at the top of the GPS. There's a button up there and it's labeled switch you need to press that before you are able to arm the board. And other PixHawk have, PixHawks have something similar, but this one I didn't know it was directly on top of the GPS, which is kind of convenient.
I was only able to stay in stabilized mode for not very long. The reason I wasn't able to go so long was just because I haven't charged the battery and it was really windy outside so the copper is being kind of blown around anyways but I can really tell a difference having those 17 inch props and it just if the copper feels stronger um, especially with that 6s battery I'm going from a 4s to a 6s you can see I'm uh, when I get my lift off here it was a little uh, shaky on the sticks I you know that first initial lift off of a new copter you get you get kind of nervous and and shaky like well is it just gonna flip over um but it went well and so I'm, I'm happy with how the the test flight went now be sure to subscribe because i will be coming out with full featured test flights um i also want to be able to figure out how long this copter can fly for the advantages that I've ha I see with the Pixhawk 4 compared to others, and it's going to be an awesome build. There's still a lot to do with. It. Like this video um, here at the end, I just want to go over a few last last things. First of all, I'm sorry for the short flight video. There will be more flight videos coming out as I build this out because I haven't even hooked up my landing gear, haven't hooked up my grabber, I haven't hooked up anything, and I'm not going to keep my um, radio antennas sticking like this I just everything else needs I need to figure everything else out still there's a lot more to do on here um, including just making it better I need to tune it better and I want to put my gimbal on it now that I know it flies so that first attempt at flying I kind of don't want to haul around all my hardware that uh, isn't necessary because who knows what can happen right you want to be certain that uh, it's gonna fly, but you just, you never could be too sure with these uh, projects that are built from home. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and until the next one, happy flying and good luck.